After months of waiting, college hockey is back in our lives, and so is a new season of North Dakota Hockey Central. Welcome to the season premiere of NDHC, your television home for all things UND hockey. I'm your host, Alex Heinert, and for 30 minutes each week from now until spring, this show's goal is to get you closer to the coaches, players, and staff who make up the greatest college hockey program in the country. When UND's new season starts this December, it will have been exactly 270 days since Bradbury's team last took the ice for a competitive game. It's a long time to wait, but then again, the 2020 Penrose Cup champs haven't exactly just been waiting. Here's a look now at the state of North Dakota hockey, starting back where we last left off this past March. Tradition, history, culture. These are the pillars for the NCAA's greatest men's hockey program, the University of North Dakota. We use those three words strongly in our program and you know we we're very uh, thoughtful on uh, the people that came before us, uh, coaches and players that built this program to where it is. With eight national titles and a record 22 Frozen Four appearances, North Dakota prides itself on consistently challenging for its sport's greatest prize. Last season was no exception. I just knew from the start with our, uh, with our upper class and even like the sophomores, we just had a special group. Everyone knew what their job was. Everyone knew what we had to do every night. Every game we, we went into, we had the confidence to go and play and win. So I think just all those things together, I think that's what made our team so successful. I was very proud of the way of our guys responded. They were resilient. They, they, they had a mindful focus each and every week. And, uh, you know, we sustained a, a really good year that we were consistent in the way we played. The consensus number one in the polls and the pairwise for much of the year, UND went 26-5-4 overall and 18-1 and at home and culminated the regular season with their third league championship since 2015. To win the Penrose on senior night in overtime um, for guys that you know did everything they could for for each other and for us, like uh, that was an unbelievable feeling. But just 12 days after lifting the trophy and hours before beginning postseason play, everything came to a halt. We find out on Twitter that our season's over. To see the end of the tunnel and see playoffs around the corner and us being the number one seed in the nation right away, uh, that was disappointing. Bob's called a team meeting at 5 o'clock. We all sat in the room and uh, it was pretty emotional. It was pretty uh, kind of a really sad way to end our, our season, especially the way that we, you know, the way that we played and, and how successful it was. You know, we came in and had the team meeting with the coaches and you know, so the seniors went around the room and kind of spoke up and guys were kind of tearing up a little bit and breaking down and you can just see how, uh, you know, like how much they care about this program and how much they put into this program in their four years. I mean, I think it still sticks with me. I mean, you try not to think about it, especially this year, we're trying to have a fresh start, you know, it's a new year, but it's always in the back of your mind. Just to not have that closure on last year, it's, it's pretty tough, especially, you know, the, the team that we did have, it was, um, it just felt right. The coronavirus enforced cancellation of the NCAA tournament signaled the start of college hockey's offseason, a time when drafted players and undrafted free agents decide to leave school for the pro ranks. In a normal year, multiple UND underclassmen on the 2020 team, a group that included nine NHL draft picks, would have likely signed NHL deals. But that wasn't the case this time. It was kind of an easy decision. Once our season ended like that, there was no chance I was going pro. Shane Pinso wasn't alone, as every non-senior but one on last year's roster chose to return to UND for the upcoming season. And ultimately, we want to win a national championship, so uh, that's, that's, I think that's why everyone came back, and I think everyone knew that we had the ability to do it this year. To get all those guys back, our seniors, um, it's a huge difference. Like To have that experience in the locker room, that leadership, um, it's definitely going to help us down the road, I know that for sure. It's hard to leave this place just because of you know, how well we have it, how much the community cares and how much hockey is here and the tradition of you know, playing at the Relf and playing for the University of North Dakota. Your time is limited here and being tight with a group here and building and growing every day, you can't replace that and our guys saw the value of that in, 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 in making that decision to come back. 
With the team reassembled, the only question remaining was when, or if, they'd get a chance to play together again. That concern was increased this September when the start of the new college hockey season was suspended indefinitely. I think everyone kind of had a little bit of doubt just not having anything set, like uh, a start date or anything. So there's, there was obviously a little bit of doubt, but you know, you just kind of got to, there's nothing you can really do. You just got to keep working and, you know, hoping they figure something out. In the end, the powers that be did come up with the plan to get the season underway. In an unprecedented scheduling move, North Dakota and the other seven schools in the NCHC will gather in December in Omaha to play the entire first half of the conference season over a three-week period. Normally in college hockey, you know, you, you play two games on a weekend, then you have a week to review and prepare for your next team, and, and now you're going to have a short turnaround, so I think it's going to be ultra-focus of, of, of playing your game, enjoy, hopefully enjoying the outcome of winning a game, and then turning the page real quick to prepare for a game that's literally 48 hours away. You know, it's a lot of games in a short amount of period. We're playing 10 games in, what is it, 22 days or something. So, but I mean, that's the fun part is the fun part is playing games, not practicing so much. I think it's just going to get us even closer for the second half. I think we're all going to bond really well during that time, and we're going to have to enjoy that experience because I don't think that'll ever happen again. Nothing about this year has been or will be traditional, but it will provide this UND team a chance to make history, to finish what they started well over a year ago. First in Omaha, and ultimately in Pittsburgh this April in the Frozen Four. No matter the final outcome though, there's no doubt this group will continue adding to North Dakota hockey's tradition, history, and culture. As a coach, you want to have success ultimately at the end of the year to win a championship. But what I want to do and what we want to do as a group is enjoy the journey, enjoy the ride. This is going to be a year that's obscure. It's going to be a sprint and we're really looking forward to enjoying it with each and every one of our players here. The way it ended last year, I think there's a lot more on the line this year to you know, win that Penrose again and get a chance at the national tournament and see how far we can go. I think we're going to get the job done. We're not going to take no for an answer this year. Not taking no for an answer. That's the mindset of the players as they prepare for the new season. Next on North Dakota Hockey Central, we'll hear more from their head coach. A conversation with Brad Berry is on the way after this. Welcome back. Here at North Dakota Hockey Central, we're excited to be joined again each week this season by the man at the helm of the nation's premier hockey program, UND head coach Brad Barry. He joins us now from inside Ralph Engelstad Arena on the eve of his sixth season in his current role and his 18th season overall at UND. Brad, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the start of another year. Absolutely, Alex. It's great to be here and great to see you again. Yeah, you as well. It's been a while now since last season ended prematurely prior to the NCHC quarterfinals in March. With that early end and a much later than usual start to the new season, season. What has this long off season been like for you and the team? <laughs> it's been like no other. Um, obviously uh, an obscure year that we've had. Um, just got to hand it to our guys as far as uh, being patient, uh, going through a process right now of uh, just getting ready to go into the Potter bubble into Omaha and, and our guys have been working hard. So uh, I, I, I would say patient and I want to thank them for that because like I said, we're all waiting for this, uh, this to start. Given the state of things with the pandemic, how much were you, the coaching staff, and the team able to stay connected this spring and summer? Yeah, we did a pretty good job of communicating, and I, it was mostly Zoom calls, phone calls, text messages, Zoom calls, all, all of the above. Uh, just trying to make sure that everybody was in the loop as far as what was going on. Um, biggest thing is staying positive and uh, making sure that you know, you know a lot of guys came back here. Uh, and we call it unfinished business. We had a lot of seniors or guys that could uh, sign pro contracts uh, that came back that uh, wanted another opportunity for it. We have a really good freshman class coming in. So uh, in a combination of uh, kind of all those uh, groups coming together, uh, you know, guys were excited. And they were excited to a point where uh, they, they built our season here through a process starting uh, in July into uh, August, into September. And, you know, I got to be honest, it's been kind of a grind here right now, but uh, uh, our guys are just really looking forward to get going. Yeah, so are we. Yeah, Brad, you bring back a lot of talent from a team that won 80% of their games last year, including new captain and Hobie Hattrick finalist Jordan Kawaguchi. What made Jordan the player's choice to wear the C this year? 
Uh, probably his day to day. Uh, you know, just uh, you know, I, let's start with may, probably his character. You know, outstanding character, great human being, uh, cares about the team, does anything for his teammates, and uh, and works hard tremendously on it on a daily basis, on and off the ice, in the classroom, in the community. So when you have a guy that's you know we call him everydayers. When you have a guy like him being an everyday or doing all the right things every single day, uh, that's the guy that you want to lead your group. And our and our uh, and our players voted him captain. And we, us as a staff, we totally agree 100%. Kawaguchi and assistant captain Matt Kearsett are two of an eight-man senior class. In recent years, you've had as little as two seniors on the roster. What are the benefits of having an older group like this? Well, they, they know what's coming and, uh, you know, they know the day to day as far as how we do things, our process from day one to the end of the season. But I, I think it's it's those situations where, you know, a leadership group that, that we have now, um, you know, it, it's it's easy to leave lead from out front when things are going well and you're winning games. But if, you know, you, you happen to lose a game or two or, or things aren't going right or going your way in a game, those guys are the ones that really kind of uh, calm the ship and kind of get it and they're going in the right direction again. Obviously, uh, us as coaches, we have the, the major voice, but the voice in the locker room is the, probably the most important one, um, you know, during those adverse times of a season. You're adding a group of highly talented newcomers as well. Talk about the six new faces who have joined UND Hockey this year. Yeah, you know what, we're really excited about, you know, our, uh, our incoming freshmen and it seems like, uh, you know, our, our freshman defensemen, uh, they're young guys. You know, a couple of them are true freshmen, a couple, one of them played an extra year junior. So you have Jake Sanderson, Tyler Clevin, and Cooper Moore, all very good uh, defensemen. Uh, common thread in all of them is their feet are excellent. They've got great mobility, they, they, they've got great pace to their game, they have all to compete. And, and, and uh, each of them have a little bit of something uh, different in their bag. And then we go to our forward group and uh, we have a lot of 20 year old experienced players that played uh, a little bit of junior hockey coming in here, uh, leading with Reese Gaber, uh, Brandon Booty, and uh, Griffin Ness. And uh, those guys will provide uh, you know, leadership from their junior level. And uh, I think that'll be a great addition into our group. But those guys are, are hard, heavy players that bring offense to our group here that, uh, that play the way we do here at North Dakota. Brad, you entered the season as the top-ranked team in the country, a position you held for much of last season. How much have you talked about handling those preseason expectations, along with the pressure of living up to last year's team with this group? Yeah, 100%. You know, just because we have everybody back uh, and, and a lot of good players coming in here in our group here, it doesn't guarantee a success. You know, the biggest thing that we talk about here at North Dakota is that you got to earn it and prove it every single day. We start at zero and, and then build a day from there. and. Uh, and our guys know that that's built into our culture. But, you know, part of that, you know, having that number one tag on you as, as far as being the preliminary, I guess, in a poll, a number one team in the country, comes a little bit of pressure. Our guys can handle the pressure, but they got to make sure that they, they harness it in the right way on, on game night. And uh, we know, uh, you know, playing here at the Ralph, teams love to come in here and knock, try, to, try to knock us off. We did a pretty good job last year of winning games in here. But I think having a number one, uh, seed uh, to start the season is we got to know that we have to bring our A game every night. We got to be sharp every night and, and teams uh, are coming at us because we got a target on our back. So that, that's motivation for us right away to, to be accountable to each other. Yeah, certainly. Well, your first test of the new season is right around the corner in Omaha in the NCHC pod. 10 conference games in 19 days for UND and you don't have a preseason exhibition this year to warm up with. How is this team prepared? for that unique challenge given all that to start the year? Well, what we try to do, Alex, is we try to rep replicate that in practice. You know, we try to do drills, we try to do scrimmages, small area games. We try to do the things that, that would happen normally in a, in a game in our practices. And, and we've had a lot of practices. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, it won't be kind of the game, game type of uh, uh, exact simulations, but I think we've, we've gotten very close to what we're going to see in games, and it's going to be going from zero to 100 miles an hour once we go. These games in Omaha all count in your quest to defend the Penrose Cup. So with that in mind, what are your biggest keys to finding success in the pod? Well, I think first of all, playing with huge compete, playing with passion and energy, you know, not overthinking it. You know, we got a new group here. We've got some freshmen integrated with our experienced players. You know, we do have a very good system and structure in place, but I think ba basic things is especially early on, play with energy, play with passion, play with pace, uh, play, with, play with ultra high compete level and keep things simple right away. Our game, our game and structure will develop as, as we go through the season.
but just keep it simple early on here. Yeah, good plan. Well, we are excited to get the pod and the season underway. We know you are too. Thanks for the time, Brad. Best of luck in Omaha and in the rest of the 2021 season to follow. Thanks a lot, Alex. We're excited about getting the season going with you. you bet, same here. Well, speaking of the new season, we will hear more about what to expect from UND in the NCHC pod. Straight from the mind of the nation's best college hockey beat writer, Brad Schlossman joins us next. back. The NCHC pod in Omaha is just around the corner. So to help preview the three week 40 game event that kicks off the new year for UND hockey, I spoke with Grand Forks Herald beat writer Brad Schlossman via Zoom earlier this week. Here now is that conversation. Brad, we're getting close to the start of another UND hockey season. A unique start with 10 games and 19 days down in the Omaha pod. When you look at the format, what's your first impression? What do you see? Well, I think uh, the biggest change is you're packing so many games into such a tight window. Usually in college hockey, you play two games a week um, and, you know, you have uh, five days off. In past years, maybe teams were able to ride one goalie uh, for the whole year. I think last year uh, we had a record number of teams that were a goaltender played 85 to 90 percent of their minutes. Uh, that, that trend has been increasing. Probably in part because Duluth had so much success with it with Hunter Shepard. Uh, now, I just don't think you can roll out the same goalie to play 10 games in 19 or 20 days. And, and the same goes for the other positions. You know, maybe uh, sometimes uh, coaches, uh, you know, really relied on those top players and they could really play them a ton of minutes, especially on Saturday nights where, you know, they have five days to, to wait before the next game and you can really let them empty the tank might not be able to do that, you know, so much anymore. So uh, I, I think that's going to be uh, interesting to see how coaches use their players and uh, things might be a little bit different in that sense. So you're saying having multiple goaltenders you can rely on and having depth are going to be important. Ironically, those are the two things that UND really brings to the table this year after being so successful with that formula a season ago. I think that's something the coaching staff is going to be very excited about. Uh, being able to have uh, two proven goaltenders, um, you know, having a fourth line that they feel very confident they can roll out quite a bit. And um, that might be an area that UND does have an advantage because that's the style of game they want to play anyway. They, they want to be able to have to uh, have all teams play all four lines and play a lot of minutes. So um, I guarantee you with this format, UND coaching staff loves the makeup of their roster. The roster is buoyed by so many guys coming back. They've got a great freshman class coming in. On paper, it looks like this is the team that has a great shot to duplicate what they did a season ago. It's not always that easy, though. What are some of the yeah. things this UND team is going to have to do to replicate the success of 2019-2020? Yeah, I think one of the things we look at, we remember that uh, DU team that won the national title in, in 2017 and brought so many big-name players back. And, uh, you know, everyone thought this team was just going to roll through the season. And, and guess what? It didn't work, work out that way. They didn't win the league title. Uh, they didn't go to the Frozen Four. Uh, things weren't super easy for them. And uh, sometimes I think you overlook how important those role players were. And, and UND had a lot of really important role players they lost. Uh, so I, I think uh, they're going to have to find uh, some of those role players to, that fill in. Uh, they're going to have to come back with the same attitude that they entered last season with. They, they had something to prove, I thought, last season. Uh, they played with a chip on their shoulder all year long. And um, they played like they were the underdog that was uh, fighting for respect every game, even when they were the number one team in the country. They, they played uh, with a chip on their shoulder. Can they, can they do that again this year? Uh, if they can, uh, I think they're going to be really good. Uh, if, if they uh, fall into the trap of uh, thinking things are going to be easy because they did so well last year, uh, they're going to have some. Uh, uh, they're going to have a rocky road at the start and some uh, tough lessons. Good stuff as always from Brad, who's entering his 16th season covering UND hockey for the Herald. He will be in Omaha this December, and so will we. All the details on Midco SN's coverage of the NCHC Pod are coming your way next.
as it is for life in general these days, get used to very little normalcy when it comes to this college hockey season. For example, some programs have been playing games for weeks now, others are starting soon or are paused until 2021, and a handful, including the Ivy League schools, have chosen to sit this year out altogether. Still, even with all that change, there are a few familiar beats for the sport, like North Dakota earning top spot in the USCHO.com media poll. Bradbury's club was number one for two months last season and right back in pole position to start 2020-2021. UND is one of three NCHC teams ranked inside the top five with two-time defending national champ Minnesota Duluth and 2017 champion Denver both expected to contend this year. Not surprisingly, those three lead the way in the NCHC preseason poll as well. Now, if you recall, Scott Sandlin's Bulldogs finished just three points back of UND in the Penrose Cup race last year, while the Pios were a distant third, one point clear of Western Michigan. Barring any schedule changes, here's what lies ahead for North Dakota in the upcoming NCHC pod. Now, fans won't be allowed to attend, but you can watch all 10 UND games, along with the other 30 games from Baxter Arena, live on Midco Sports Network. And if you live out of Midco's coverage area, all of our broadcasts will be streamed live with a subscription to nchc.tv. It's going to be a busy month, but we are thrilled to be bringing you every game from the pod on our network. Check out midcosn.com for scheduled details. That will do it for us on North Dakota Hockey Central for this week. On behalf of our Midco SN crew, I'm Alex Heinert. Enjoy the start of another new UND hockey season, and I'll see you from Baxter Arena.